come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night, we do a podcast here in the dank, dark dungeon basement. This is the more energy version. Yeah, I got You're it. saying last. That's yeah. like yeah. you, like, like fishing for <laughs> listeners. Is that what's going on here? Like we're trying to be a more positive. Like, <laughs> well, last week you gave me shit about like uh, uh, thanks Welcome for listening. Welcome back to, to <laughs> Saturday Night Free Show. Here we gather together every week to watch a movie picked by somebody in the <laughs> right from one of the internet radio superstars, including. How and Travis and Colin. That's me. And uh, we're down a man because Sean's off. Well, he always uh, watches. He always shows some <laughs> shitty movie, then disappears for the next fucking. He's few like, here's Jack Frost, fuckers. I'm going to Florida. <laughs> what was the movie you picked before Jack Frost? I don't remember. Uh, I looked shitty. Uh, oh, man, I, don't know. I can't I don't even remember. remember. It was, it was uh, a while Slumber ago. Party Massacre too. No, no I don't know. Well, that was a while ago. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, as always, you can uh, find us on, well, you already did, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn. Uh, it would really help us out, folks, if you were to give us a star rating or a like on those uh, platforms because it helps uh, other like-minded people like yourself find our show. It helps out. Then we appreciate you listening. And we also want to give you a status update on the Listener's Choice uh, yes. movies. We're going to be doing those shortly. I think about two weeks from now we're going to dig into those. I think what we're going to do is each one of us, all four of us, the core Freak Show team members are going to pick from those submissions or suggestions. So again, don't be upset if yours doesn't get chosen. It's a long year ahead of us, and it's possible that some of them will show up there since yeah, we know what you'd like to hear. We've already looked at the list hear. and thought, "Oh, I wanted to do that anyway at some point." So it's a good, sh- good shot that yours is going to get picked. There you go. There you go. Uh, so tonight's movie was chosen by Holly. Yes. Holly, what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched. Santa Slay. From the year... 2005. Directed by... David Steinman. So, here's the thing. I've yeah. noticed that, like, <laughs> at some point in the past, we got into doing Halloween movies for the month of October. Yes. And I think that just kind of naturally <laughs> segued into Christmas movies in the month of December. Yes. Those are the only times we've done them. Right. It's just Halloween and Christmas <laughs> are the only times we do movies based on the season. Yeah. So Merry Christmas to all you folks out there. After Thanks two for years, listening. We're running really short of Christmas. I know. I don't know if there's going to be a, a Christmas, a series We've never of Christmas. Seen Christmas Eve all. Well, there you go. We'll Next, year. <laughs> Next year. Next year. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Santa's sleigh. Santa's, Santa's sleigh. sleigh. Starring everyone's favorite Jewish wrestler, Bill Goldberg. Do they call him Bill, Bill or is he just Goldberg? Goldberg? In the wrestling, Who's a wrestling fan in the here? Wrestling, I used to watch it when I was a kid with my brother. Was he on it when he you was, were? Yeah. yeah. And, it, I mean, in wrestling world, it was just Goldberg. Goldberg. Yeah. All right. So he's a big dude. Big dude. He's a guy you go like, you know, we're making a movie about Santa Claus. Goldberg. Yeah. Well, there's Obviously. only like a few wrestlers in movies, right? What? John Cena. The Rock. The Rock. Goldberg. <laughs> was Tiny Lister, was he a wrestler? Who? T- the tiny lister he's the black guy with the eyes that are kind of he was in this movie in santa's sleigh here oh debo sleigh. from friday debo yeah he was yeah. in the fifth element he was like the governor or the mayor yeah, or the yeah, yeah. president president yeah that is would he make a wrestler? More sense. that's what i'm asking i don't know he's don't built so. like a wrestler that's why he i was is, wondering no. he's the big guy he's andre the giant was also a... andre the giant i mean back in the 90s uh roddy piper was in a lot shit yeah roddy yeah. piper and that dude from escape from new york who gets the bat in the back yeah. of his head but nowadays there's a specific because like back in those days like the hogan's or the terry oh, yeah, hulk hogan's hogan. yeah. and fucking lots of stuff like i don't and know Kane. i can't, I can't yeah. say those people could act but today's wrestler actor like the rocks uh... the rock is it though that's yeah. why what about john cena well, but he's I, not I, an actor. Oh, yeah, he yeah. acts. Yeah, well, but he was he's, in the Marine. Oh, well, he's in uh, that new movie with... Uh, no, he's in that... It's his new... It's called The Wall. And yeah. he's, like, stuck... But he, I think he gets shot, sniper shot. And the dude from Godzilla is, like... Or Kick-Ass. 
stuck behind this little Is crumbling wall? produced wall? by WWE? I don't think so. I always yeah. assume that it's produced by WWE. Because, I mean, because mm. none of these wrestlers nowadays, they don't have, like, different personalities the way, like, like Hogan did to Roddy Pye. All these guys nowadays are just, what are you going to do <laughs> when I <laughs> metal schools? <laughs> Or Kane, who doesn't say anything in the See No Evil movies, right? Yeah, yeah. he just don't. Yeah, he just wears a mask because he's like, well, he's Michael Myers on he's WWE, Kane. so let's just make him Michael Myers in a, <laughs> in a movie. movie. Why yeah. not? I Logically, mean, works. but those were produced by WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's were. why it's like I swear to God, even like I, I don't care. Like if we did like real some real detective work, I could I bet we find wrestling money and all of the like we don't. <laughs> I don't think these people just get picked up. I mean, I'm just bullshitting, but still. <laughs> yeah, because we were looking at the credits of this one. It does not. The surprise about this one was that it was produced by Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner, yeah. But I guarantee you, if fucking Vince McMahon saw that, I'd be like, no, dude, we're going to like, we'll put some other company on that. Like, that will not have the name WWE on it. I yeah, because it just says Media 8. Well, Vince McMahon's yeah. big in like branding. Like, it would be WWE, right? Unless he wanted to disown so. it. Even think, then, yeah. I think he's like, but if it's wrestling, way, it's got to have. But the same way like Disney will do, right? If Disney's like, oh, you know, it's not like good enough for like either Disney or whatever, so let's slip it under here. Like, it could be under Touchstone, Touchstone or, or whatever the fuck they <laughs> yeah. do, right? Buena Vista. Well, Hollywood Pictures, you remember video, that? right? Yeah. Hollywood Pictures was the other one that was like yeah. a Touchstone spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. The, All right. the story of this one is story. David Steinman. <laughs> oh, the behind the scenes story. Oh, oh that's what we're going to say. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, the making of the story. <laughs> I story, see what you're you guys. That's yeah. hilarious. The, uh, I was curious. The about backstory what you were to. of the creation of this David Steinman was production assistant to some pretty big time people, including Brett Ratner and Robert Zemeckis. He worked on some big movies. Um, and he was on a plane. With Ratner, and he said, "Lost a bet, right?" No, he no, was, it was. It was. It was a flight to Japan. So it was a long flight, and he oh. took the opportunity. He's like, "I'm going to convince Brett Ratner to help me with this movie." So he pitched the idea to him. He had already created like a mock-up, like movie poster, and he had this whole pitch. And he's like, "I want to make this movie." And Brett Ratner was so like, I, it kind of seemed like he was so proud of him because he was his production assistant for quite some time, and. He got excited about it, and he helped him get some money put behind it. And he, well, we saw at the beginning of the film opens up was fucking James Caan. Yeah. Like, hello. Yeah. He, Brett Ratner called up some of his buddies. He's like, you know, my assistant, David, he's making this movie. Do you want to help him out? And they're like, yeah, David's awesome. Let's help him out. And that's wow. kind of how this movie came about. It's a Hollywood it's a like, fan yeah. fairy tale. It this is. is a Hollywood <laughs> fan film is what it is. It's like, we all like, it's like, this is what. Kevin Smith does nowadays, if you ask me. You know, he just like, ah, oh, get pull some strings, get some buddies together, make whatever fucking Well, if nothing else, we can say that this movie does okay, so I mean like we're coming off of seeing Jack Frost last week. Yeah. So in terms of production value, this is leaps and bounds oh, yeah. over Jack Frost. Yeah. Like this That's is the, the only thing not wrong with this movie. Uh, right. the production. <laughs> like yeah. the lighting. It has, oh my God. You know, yeah. I mean, it's lighting. got stunt work and there's cars like going off of ramps. I mean, like it's a professional Hollywood yeah. production, which, but it wasn't a theatrical release, correct? This it, went it direct was, to it video? Was it well, was intended to be, but no, it was, uh, it was released well, in Germany. That's why I'm, but I'm like, here, Spike, I think Spike TV purchased it and it ended up going straight to video I but think. it's just too ridiculous this movie doesn't have any sort of even though we're saying it has good production value and stars it's got stars stars, stars. no okay stars okay. I mean, these are fam- name value star. he's a famous person is he a star yes. now? i think james no, Conner was exactly yeah. what we can't, we can't say oh my god you were in the godfather fucking 40 years ago you're a star you're well biggest. he was in misery he went to see misery because he was in it yeah. alienation because he was in it yeah, that show vegas because he's in it years ago. vegas was he, like it's mean probably he's still star on now um he I was think. an elf <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and now he's all like, oh, well, in a lot of Family Guy episodes. I don't know. <laughs> Serious. He's not well, a he's star still now. like, you go 
to see a movie because he's in it. I think that's still, he's a movie star. Not in this capacity in this movie where he's like a cameo appearance. He's just a cameo. But it was just surprising. The movie mm-hmm. starts out at a dinner table for Christmas Fran and the Dresser. camera. Yeah, Fran Drescher's there as the mom. Rebecca yeah. Gayhart is there. Um, Chris what's Katan. it? Chris Catan. Yeah. Was there one more? And then the camera uh, pans around and fucking like, James Woods is there. And you're like, like, or James Woods, James <laughs> Conn. You're like, what the hell's going on here? Is this like a real movie? Yeah. No, of course not. <laughs> then Bill Goldberg busts through the chimney as Santa Claus yeah, and so you kills know it's everyone. It's not a real movie. You're like, no, this is like, looks like something that would be like on television in the 50s. You know, he just bursts through the fucking. Like the Kool Aid Man, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, it is. We were talking about, oh, it's got good production, but it has no atmosphere for something that's supposed to be a scary Santa. Is it? It's just a good. No. I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't no think atmosphere. it's. Supposed, but it's not. So, I don't think it's supposed to be a scary Santa. He's not supposed to be scary because you got to remember. Of this, course, the whole, every, this the is story, all irony. No, this, this is another th- ironic, like tongue in cheek bullshit movie. The story of this is that the story. good Quit Santa. Okay, the concept <laughs> is the the good Santa. The storyboard Santa. is really an evil Santa who's pretending to be good. So he's not like scary Santa. But he's we don't know any Santa. of this into the last twenty minutes of the movie. So, so that's why I'm like, this movie is just Santa showing up and doing wrestling moves on people. And you're like, okay, next scene. Well, it was kind of, I guess this was maybe my impression of what we were going to see. Again, I hadn't seen it before tonight. The movie's called Santa's Sleigh, not yeah. like the ride, more like the murder. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, so this is a holiday slasher movie, right? That so was I guess, my understanding. Yeah. So, but seeing it, the tone of it, even though Santa kills a lot of people, and I mean, there's not even, I wouldn't say it's not, it doesn't linger on gore effects. No. There's no, no. suspense. It's he just body slams people and shit. Yeah, it's, just it's like, all kind of humorous or tongue in cheek. You know, I mean, this is like, uh, it's professional enough that it kind of seems like it's coming out of the same uh think tank that gives you movies like Dr. Giggles, right? I mean it's like yeah. it's got that kind of production value and it's goofy like that where you the doctor is it and the doctor will see you now the you know like except it's going to be Santa Claus yeah. this time like going through and mowing people down with his uh bison led uh mm-hmm. Santa sleigh. So I guess it was <laughs> it was a diff- it was a different thing than I expected that it was going to be right really? off the bat. Yeah, Santa yeah. Slay. I knew right from the. It's like it's just another ironic fucking yeah, but bullshit, like, like cynical. But you know that like Jack Frost, you go into that going like, okay, this is gonna be a goofy comedy horror movie, Santa but there's Slay more of a horror to with Jack Bill Frost. Goldberg. Yeah, he can still be killing people with axes and stuff like that. I didn't like. I said I didn't know I, going into this. I avoided this movie <laughs> when it came out. Santa <laughs> Slay. <laughs> Yeah, like, Silent I Night, Deadly that Night. This was going to be just like a bad kind of like Silent Night, Deadly Night. Mm-hmm. I didn't even think it was going to be as stupid as this was. <laughs> I no, I agree. I thought it was going to be a little more slasher. Like yeah. I, I really did. I well, because he has was... a fucking icicle. Like he's like going to yeah, stab no, it... somebody with it. But that would like We're saying on the cover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But. That was surprising. I mean, the the opening scene, which is, you know, I guess well orchestrated and choreographed, the rich people all get killed by Santa Claus, drops you in like in the middle of something where you're like, what in the hell is going on? Yeah. Which is, I guess, where I was at mentally watching this. I'm like, okay, so we're not going to explain if this is actual Santa, if this is some kind of, you know, super mutant dude just dressed as Santa. Just a guy in a Santa costume walks in, kills everybody. Credits. Yeah. So it's a little late. Like, it actually does take, in the the running time of the movie, a while for them to actually tell you what the hell is going on Mm -hmm. with this character. Because there's scenes of him, like, walking up to people on the street and pile driving. (laughs) (laughs) That's like the first half of this movie, even a little bit more than that, probably, is just... The scenes with Bill Goldberg are just random. They're just fucking random. They're yeah. just thrown in there. You're like, well, he killed somebody is he else. Working towards something. Is yeah. this going anywhere? He's yeah. just, oh, hey, dude. No, he that. <laughs> Who's oh, that? That's Macho Man. Yeah. Macho Man yeah. 87. Oh, yeah. Hey, talking. brother. Yeah. Was that him? That was Hogan. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> doesn't matter. They all saw that. That's Not a wrestling a, a fan, guy folks. That can't Forgive act me. With a gravity yeah, voice Slim Jim. Saying, <laughs> saying aggressive stuff. That's just that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Naughty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Well, our movie actually centers on oh Robert Culp. Does it? From I Spy? No. 
What's Robert Culp known for? The greatest American hero? No. He's an old man now. Yeah. Or at least it was at the time of this. Still turns in a decent performance, I thought. You know, it's he's, he's professional. Is this but, the grandpa? Yeah. yeah. You don't remember Greatest American Hero? He no. was the dude. Oh, okay. I, fine. It. Uh, I think he was actually. No, he wasn't on the nanny. Anyway, uh, so he he has. Okay, so we're just laying out like what's going on in this thing. He's an angel who. Well, no, come on, you, you guys are making it sound like this is a movie with some like solid story structure. Well, no, that we is need the... to play this out the way the movie. You're just like a kid comes home and he's like, "My grandpa hates Christmas," and the guy's just like, "I hate Christmas, guy. I got a book, a book called the Book of Santa." And you're like, "This is fucking retarded." It's just like, ah, oh, everything about this movie drives me absolutely out of my mind because it's like the whole movie. You're like, so you've got a book of claws, right? Which is an old Norse leather bound gigantic thing that he yeah. keeps in his bunker in the basement. Yeah. And of course you would like worry all year yeah, well, about I mean, that's where like, I keep my, you know, tomes. You would wait knowledge. until you're like nineteen to be like, Hey grandpa, why does Christmas scare I mean, obviously he was raised by his grandpa, right? His parents yeah. aren't yeah. around apparently. This. And he just now is like trying to figure out like, why are you scared of Christmas? The fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. And the grandpa built a bunker. Is, is this bunker for Christmas? <laughs> this is what they're letting you assume is that the bunker is for Santa. Well, it's also well, because he it's, knows. But it's great he that he knows. built this bunker apparently while the the kid was at work that day cuz it's in the basement of the house that the kid lives in yeah. which has like all the locks on the doors or whatever. Yeah. Cuz uh you know, you're getting the idea that the grandpa's paranoid. Everybody in town thinks he's crazy. Well, we find out why. He's building bunkers like in his spare time and in the basement of his house. He also builds crazy uh inventions like nutcrackers cuz that... it's 1986 and this is a, you know, is that or, something or 2005. From the 80s where you're like you're you're Well, you're they did it in Gremlins. Grandpa does like he builds crazy inventions. Like in Gremlins, right? So exactly. there's a yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> And you would think that, well, I guess it does have something to, pl- I mean, it's retarded. It's a fucking, like, a nutcracker that shoots, what, something? Chestnuts. Bullets. Chestnuts? Yeah, because if you bust open a chestnut, or if you crack it before it's roasted, it can explode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so he turns it into a projectile weapon. Yep. Well, he's that kind of grandpa, the cool kind. Well, because yeah. he has to fight Santa. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. been preparing for this all of his life. For a thousand, thousand years. years. One thousand years. For a thousand years. Yeah. Because Grandpa is actually us. an angel. So, in, uh, well, I actually enjoyed the... This happens in the last ten minutes of the movie. Like, the whole movie, you're wondering, like, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Right. Why? Is Are yeah. they going to get to any story except for Bill Goldberg coming in? And beating up people and a dude like running around with a girl telling him to man up. Well, before that, they actually do uh, early in the movie, I'd say within the first 20 minutes, they get to a point where the uh, the grandpa shows the book to the kid and it starts to explain the story of Santa Claus. The idea that Santa Claus. And so it's the actual Santa Claus, but he was the son of Satan. Yeah, he's the son of Satan. There were two immaculate births in the recorded history. One of them, Jesus. One of them, Santa Claus. Or into who? I'm not entirely sure what her name was. Satan and the Virgin something or other. Yeah, they don't don't know. know. And he, Santa Claus lost a bet to an angel a thousand years ago. For a curling competition. (laughs) Well, this was shot in Alberta, Canada. It takes place in Detroit. Where is curling a bigger deal? That's the only good part of this movie is the Rankin and Bass stop motion... Flashback I thought that was, sequence. I thought that was great. That's the I only did. good thing about oh, yeah. this movie. It looks like something off of uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. You know, it looks like one. I mean, I can't say it's as good as one of those, but it looks no, like it. But it's yeah. it looks like it captures somewhat the same spirit or whatever. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, funny. Santa Claus is an yeah. evil thing that actually has a night of terror, and an angel says, "If I can beat you at this thing." curling then it'll be a thousand years of a night of joy but the the trick is that santa if he loses the bet actually has to be a cherubic joyful Mm -hmm. creature his night of terror becomes a night of joy for a thousand years well he has to answer all the mail that comes to the north pole and he has basically because he loses he becomes the santa claus that we know from it's like so in this world santa does exist yeah and he gets letters yeah well right he would i wrote letters to santa yeah but so the postman (laughs) deliver it to santa i mean come on (laughs) this is why it's like you're dealing with a world they don't 
Santa, what do you, or, yes, they do. Travis, what do you say? Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little kids are writing, and we don't even know who's listening to this show. Yeah. They could Parents believe. throw that shit away. <laughs> they don't mail it. They're not wasting a stamp on that they shit. They crack it open and read it. Oh, the harsh realities of life. Uh, yeah, but in this movie, so Santa has been forced magically to behave basically for a thousand mm-hmm. years and his thousand year contract of being good is up. Yep. And that leads to him reverting to his demon self. He's come to take his revenge. And do we say that they live in hell? They live in the hell township, which is a real place in Michigan. Which is why they said it in Michigan. Yeah. There it is. Yep. So they live in hell, yep. Michigan. Yes. Oh, is that funny? I'm sorry. Hell, look at it. Yeah, Travis Travis wasn't sitting in the back there laughing at many of the jokes. I was going to say there were like three of them that got me, but traditionally, you know, like comedies, usually that's how I watch comedies. Like, hmm. Oh, that was funny. (laughs) Oh, that's good. Yeah. I like that. (laughs) But there were some chuckles. There were some chuckles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm sorry. sorry. I just, I feel the the anger radiating off of Travis right now. (laughs) The hatred for Santa's sleigh. Yeah. Now let's talk about let's talk about the production because I actually really like how they portrayed Santa. I, I as like the, all the the Norse influences, like his sleigh, the bison. I thought that was all pr- pretty good. I I think the budget for this movie was like four point five million dollars. Yeah? yeah. Well, I mean, I guess. I mean, I can see that. You know, yeah. looking at it, it's like. It's, you know, like I said before, it's They're a competently lighting. made thing. <laughs> good camera angles. A stunt crew that, you know, whatever, was driving uh, um, snowmobiles and cars yeah. off of as Santa's, like, running people off the road. Little old ladies. foul mouth little old ladies <laughs> off the road early in the movie. Yeah, um, I actually really, I like the detail. The sleigh, the, the sleigh itself has, has a lot of detail. I like that there's his little emblem. I don't know if you noticed that's on, yeah, on his like back. everything. It's on. He's got like oh, yeah. a belt. Yeah. It's on his sleigh, like on the dashboard. It's, it's like a little Santa face. Yeah. It's like a mean looking Santa face. And the detail on the sleigh, like there was the, the like Nordic shields, like the, cause it's very, it's got a very Viking feel. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. And I liked the bison. Yeah, instead, instead of like blind goats or something, right? That's what yeah. you expect for um, the demonic Santa Claus. Yeah, a you white can't, bison. You can't have traditional reindeer. You yeah, just can't do that. Yeah, I mean, I I really like the the Santa. I mean, the way they made Santa menacing is they they didn't make him this demonic Santa because he's not supposed to be. He's supposed to be the real Santa. So at some point, you know, he has to have that sort of um, approachable Santa facade. So instead of making him like evil they used the nordic background to make him menacing you know they it's like viking santa well, this is assuming that santa claus is like a there's viking there's, construct right there's no yeah. satan santa claus. <laughs> right not that we know <laughs> yeah but santa claus travis we were talking outside uh like santa you think santa had like his start as a commercial fixture from it really macy's? is this movie makes a joke about santa being a coca-cola well i think it was macy's I think Macy's is originally the guy, like some painter for Macy's is what came up with the Santa Claus concept we know today. So Santa Claus is really no older than like the 20s or, yeah. you know, or whatever the fuck. Maybe, maybe, or maybe a little earlier than that. Yeah, but, you know, there's a whole idea that, oh, it's a little bit of St. Nicholas. It's a little bit of Father Christmas, Santa yeah. Claus yeah. and all that shit. But that is really just mixing. It's just like one of those things where, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, Jesus is the same as Horus, is the same as Marduk, or where fuck, where you could take well, right. Santa is the same as this guy, same as this guy. Where it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sure in our big like multicultural bullshit, I'm sure like things came from everybody. Yeah. But you know, I mean, you were saying that like even like Christmas Story or Christmas Carol by Dickens, not really a yeah. mention of Santa Claus, right? Yeah, like, which you right. figure no, yeah. in that one. Yeah. That's well, there like, is a Father Christmas, I guess, right in the yeah. Ghost of Christmas present kind of who has that look right with the that's just the look but a yeah, lot of that's... people think the painter macy's got his look from mm-hmm. the you know christmas present uh design of Are the you talking play about norman or... rockwell uh no not norman rockwell i don't know who it is i'm not positive who it is does that make santa claus like an american construct are we taking too much credit well, he's here? a is capitalist that a it's an american <laughs> capitalist constructor <laughs> 
<laughs> or whatever. Yeah. I mean, no matter how you look at it, I mean, Santa Claus does our Santa Claus. I mean, Christmas in itself has, you know, it's pagan roots, right? Mm-hmm. You right, log, yeah. you know, nothing you really do for Christmas. The tree. Is, yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're at, you're all worshiping Babylonian gods. I want you all to know that. That's why I started doing my research. <laughs> See, <laughs> is this like such a hard spinoff that we would go to a horror Santa Claus? I suppose right. no, whatever. Uh, so okay, so the A plot of this movie, let's say, is about the is about this kid who turns out to be the the grandson of the old guy who bested Santa Claus yeah, a thousand years ago. An angel. And he's working in a Jewish deli. By that, Heaven sent. That dude. Who's yeah. that, who's it's that Saul, guy? Saul Rubinek. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. yeah. That guy's yeah. in everything. Yeah, he was, uh, I keep thinking of True Romance, where he was the agent. But he was also in Frasier for a while, and he's been in a he's bunch of... He's just always a, like, shady dude. He's always, like, a whimpering little, like, I mean, not so in this, but... Yeah. Just because all he has to do is be, like, Jewish and, like... Yeah. <laughs> all he has to do is be Jewish. <laughs> he really is. That's the role. That's the role. We need a Jewish guy. He's he doesn't affordable. say Merry Christmas. He says Happy Holiday and gets told off by yeah. the aforementioned foul mouth uh, old lady. <laughs> but this guy, so the our main character, what's his name anyway? I can't remember. Uh, Davey, Doug, Jeff? Boy, Doug, boy, number one. Nikki in the movie. His name's Douglas Smith, I think. In... Well, Nikki? Okay. Nikki, yeah. That would make Douglas sense. Douglas Smith, yeah. The actor is Douglas Smith. But I, he's well, got he was a... in Ouija, wasn't he? Was he? Was he in Ouija? I or... did not recognize him. I that doesn't mean wrong. he wasn't. I might be wrong. I, don't I, don't know. I, I know him from Big Love on HBO. Oh. That's where I know him from. Oh. Yeah. And his, uh, would the object of his affection is Emily DeRaven? DeRaven? Yes. From Lost and um, uh, Once Upon a Time, she plays Belle from Beauty and the Beast. That's where she is now? Mm-hmm. So I remember from The Hills Have Eyes. And, that too. And uh, what was the other? Uh, Brick. Mm-hmm. Who's the girl in Brick? A very fetching young lass. Yeah. say? Australian. I think she's yeah, she Australian. always has been yeah. doing like these American accents and yeah. like all the indie movies and stuff that I've ever seen her do. So it was like, uh, yeah, a shock when she's all of a sudden. Which I don't really talking. know what she, her accent was muffled in this. It, it didn't sound, it sounded like she was trying to do kind of Canadian, which is weird since it was in Michigan. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so these two kids, I mean, they've got like the, they're not even the meat cutes. They just, he works with her, right? Yeah. And so then they're going to go off and eventually become embroiled in this plot to stop evil Santa Claus. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it structures it so like the I mean, this move. I mean, the structure is like what the Santa Claus is just going after these people and you don't know why. At this Toward point, the yeah. end of it, yeah. yeah, there was those moments where you're like, why is he like, I mean, because up until this point, right, or up until the end, we've seen like there's a scene of Santa Claus attacking a random person on the street, followed by a scene with the teenagers, either by themselves or with the uh, the grandfather. Mm-hmm learning the history of Santa. So like the whole thing seems to be like the, the two parallel storylines. We don't know what Santa's objective is other than to just cause mischief and kill everyone in the town. Mm -hmm. And their objective is to learn as much as they can and get the backstory and get, you know, fed exposition to the audience so that they can combat this menace by the end of the movie. Right. And there's a couple of action scenes. I'm using that in air quotes. Yeah. That's loosely. Yeah. Where they're in a truck being pursued by Santa Claus. Well, there was also like the 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 weird. Um, so Santa can come back for apparently a twenty four. We're told a twenty four hour period. Mm-hmm. That starts at like seven o'clock Central Time on Christmas Eve, and sure. ends at seven o'clock. Central. Whatever the South Pole or North Pole time zone. Yeah, and that's when his powers will magically cease. We're told. Yeah. yeah. So he is governed by some kind of uh, uh, supernatural, whatever the hell. It's some sort of Cinderella midnight thing. I don't know. But, yeah, we find out that that doesn't really, it doesn't really pertain. His North Pole time is where the time zones converge, according to Santa. Yeah, you're waiting for it. You think that's one of their, like, outs, is that if they can, like, run out the clock Mm -hmm. to 7 o'clock or something. Yeah, and that gives Bill Goldberg a chance to give one of his, what do you say, like, I'm Santa Claus, I'm or whatever, I'm at the North Pole, and I can be... Christmas ends when I say, or something like that. Yeah. Do you say bitch at the end of that? You like should've. Freddy Krueger? <laughs> Christmas ends when I say so, bitch. 
He should have. I feel like he should have, but I don't think he did. Yeah. It wasn't part of his uh, one-liner. Well, last week, Travis was talking about how the uh, creation of Freddy Krueger in the 1980s and the wisecracking uh, villain of a movie like kind of changed the face of horror movies. And this is kind of the an extension of like a late entry extension of that. But this is like still going on then in 2005. It just shows how if you just have some stupid um, gimmick <laughs> that you can just reuse the same sort of stupid ideas and the, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they stick with the formula. So at the end of the film, when these two timelines converge, and mm-hmm. after I'm saying converge because they they kill the uh, the grand uh, the the grandfather. Right. Mm -hmm. In a scene where were you guys aware that he was the angel old man from the Rankin and Bass animated flashback at this point? Or was that like a complete out of left field? No, I kind of put it together because, I mean, the figurine kind of looked like him. But I mean, I didn't think anything of it in that scene. And then when he says when he's talking to Santa and he's like, Oh, you let yourself go. And it's been a long time. I'm like, Oh, well, they know each other. So clearly this is, he's, you know, he's got the book. It's like a family thing. Like, obviously he's the guy, he's the angel or, well, I didn't know he was an angel at that point, but, mm. but if they kill him off at that point, then there's no, we're wondering how the hell the kid is actually going to find out this information mm-hmm. because St. Nick, Santa Claus starts pursuing the kid and the girlfriend for no apparent reason at this point in the movie, then he's just like single. All you know is for, down on for some reason he kills the Jewish, um, whatever meat guy, the delicatessen owner, yeah. yeah, and sees a picture of him, and then goes after him. Yeah. Like Why John does he Connor. go after the kid? Well, he's <laughs> right, a, he, yeah, because yeah. he's the Terminator. Yeah, he sees the picture of the grandpa and the kid together. So I, I, they, they kind of brush over it that the fact that it's almost a um like a family right as long as this kid is alive he's kind of like the bloodline they barely brush on did they touch on that at all only (laughs) only, yeah only in the very end like what you're an angel yeah. And then did I miss a line? And he said, "Being you're the next angel, Nikki, and you're gonna have to do this." And well, no, but he when he's got the book and he's talking to his girlfriend and he's like, "I've I've got a, I don't remember how he said it, something along, I've I've got an an adventure now, or I, what did he say? Because I've got a mission now, no. something like that." They vaguely brushed over it. Well, I know we were having a problem where they, you know, in fleeing from Santa Claus, they go to a school and yeah. break into it. For a reason that, in hindsight, none of us can remember. They had a school to shoot at. <laughs> why, why they actually did, I don't know, but they basically needed the hockey rink. Well, that's right. There was the hockey. I was oh. thinking that when I saw the hockey. I was like, is this in the school? Oh, oh and, ho- and Michigan hockey's a big deal. For the that's curling. So. For the challenge again. For the curling, for the curling challenge, yeah but, yeah. but there was a scene, like, shortly after this where she said something about, you know, I just remember them saying, like, okay, yeah, we got to get out of here. And she's like, yeah, this time we're going to use the door instead of breaking the window and coming through. So, And that was, like, a scene later. It was like they broke into it to hide or whatever the fuck, or if they needed the, the hockey, hockey rink. And then they were saying, like, let's get out of here a minute later. Out of the room, maybe? With the kids? They didn't know that they needed the hockey or rink. Or out of the school. Oh, the so filmmakers just, needed the hockey happened. rink. <laughs> they just needed the hockey rink to get to a... Yeah, uh, the filmmakers needed it. The kids didn't know why. Well, yeah. Let me ask you guys about... Okay, now we were saying how this has good production, right? Now, is it good production to be like, you're an angel, all white? <laughs> like, is that good? <laughs> like, I don't, I'm just like, that's the only time in this movie I was like... What the fuck? Like he's wearing a like a it's just a white plaid jacket or something. It's just yeah, like yeah. you look like a white bum. That's yeah. all you look like. Well he did know? have the white hair and it, there was like the visual effect, which was like, you know, I'm like, huh. They got like an actual little halo and the glow thing, yeah. and then it, it goes away like thirty seconds later because that's as far as the money would go. Yeah. On yeah. the effect. Well, but... like we had James Conn in the first fucking twenty right. minute seconds of this movie. Yeah. And that was where the, those effects. That's where the all the cash went. Just put white clothes on. 
But that was yeah. it was like, okay, so we're gonna kill this character off, but he'll still be around in the end to carry on, you know, to have the final battle with uh, uh Saint Nick because the kid hasn't been informed of like what his true lineage is mm-hmm. then. There's also well Well I was just gonna say, was I can't remember, <laughs> even though we just watched this movie. Was it one of those things? Is I felt like it was one of those times in those movies where it's like the killer's after us, the killer's after us. Grandpa, you're an angel. Yes, let me tell you the story of the da, 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 And you're like, I mean, you, it wasn't the big backstory thing we were talking about with the claymation, but you know, just the fact it's like, wait, aren't we still in a situation here? Do we have time to talk to this guy about like, <laughs> oh yes, the lineage of the I gave up my powers to like. I've never heard that as being, if an angel wanted to fuck an, a human, I don't think giving up any part of their power is, they could just do it. This character's uh, Nephilim. Oh, wait, I just figured that there out. There might be a precedent for this. It was that movie with uh, Nicolas, Nicolas Cage, Cage and Meg and, Ryan. Yes. City of Angels? City don't, of Angels. Don't cite a movie as being precedent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't understand the timeline on this, right? Because Grandpa says, I loved your mother. And that's, he became human. He's the only angel, apparently, who became human uh, and gave up his powers. And I'm like, a thousand years ago? (laughs) Like, how long is this, right? Because it's a thousand years ago. Just a thousand years ago is when he made his bet with Santa Claus. Yeah, a thousand years ago is when the curling challenge happened in the first place. He just decided to do this in the past... I guess 55, 60 years or something like that. Right. Right. He yeah. finally found a... I would have liked to have seen that kid's grandma. She must have been pretty hot. What happened to his parents? <laughs> like, it would have made yeah. sense if, like, Santa Claus killed his parents, like, forever ago. All a fucking Silent Night, Deadly Night. <laughs> <laughs> you just want this movie to be Silent Night, Deadly Night. Every, every killer Santa Claus should be. <laughs> I'm telling you. I find it more... I find the... I find the idea of Santa Claus to be more terrifying than just, like, look out, scary Santa Claus. Because he's a guy who he knows you when you're, sl- or he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Just something. I don't know. <laughs> he's like stalker Santa Claus. What was that scene in Cloverfield where John Goodman was doing the, he, I'm always watching. Yeah. <laughs> <It> was like, <laughs> yeah, the creepy, uh, mm. creepy Santa Claus. Well, I mean, Santa Claus in the movies, in horror movies, has generally been represented like, I mean, in recent times, they end up getting into like Saint, right? Did you see anybody see that? I did not see no. that. No. And that's like the Father Christmas, whatever. He's got the Pope hat and all yeah. that stuff okay, on yeah. it. But uh, the reviews weren't good, so I didn't see it. So maybe listeners, right. you tell us if we should be checking out Saint. There was rare exports. I didn't see that. Everybody says that's good. Uh, it was Do they? a lot. I of haven't people. heard anything about that. It was decent. Uh, it's a uh, you know again going back to it's a cynical kind of way of looking at Christmas because you've got a kid who's ostracized and you know uh, ends up you know coming into contact with these. Well, I, okay, yeah, uh, Santa Claus like <laughs> uh, uh, demons or whatever that have been hidden in the uh, mountains of Scandinavia or whatever the hell. And this. <laughs> and the sequels do, yeah. Right? Because Krampus is kind of a different thing, where it's like the anti-Santa Claus. Right, but I suppose yeah. it's like once we've gone as far as we can with the killer Santa Claus, then we go to the Krampus. Demon Santa yeah. Claus. Yeah, Demon Santa Demons Claus. Demon like Christmas. Right? Sure. Because yeah, I can't sure. remember. I know there was a segment of holidays, that anthology that was set on Christmas, but I mm. don't believe. I don't see it. Mm-mm. Yeah. As far as like films that are set on Christmas but not necessarily with Santa slashers. Right. Yeah. I mean, Santa slashers are a rare thing just because I guess they're, well, I mean, today I guess would be different, but back in the eighties, I mean, they didn't figure there was a market, right? I mean, shit, you just saw what happened the other day when a mall Santa told a kid to like lay off the burgers and fries you know, you can't like like the visage of Santa is fucking still important. Oh yeah. So too many people are afraid to market a movie that's like ah, oh, killer Santa. That's because what you got the idea of like if there's a three year old kid who still is you know believes in Santa and they see the marketing for you know something coming out of the chimney with an axe that's bloody in the Santa head, it's going to confuse them. Yeah. I suppose so it's like let's keep Santa Claus pure for the I little was kids. Crazy Santa for Halloween and. I made sure that when you're crazy Santa, like escape lunatic dressed as Santa, you always put the beard under your chin. That's how kids are supposed to know you're not Santa, right? You got like a five o'clock shadow. The You don't even have the beard on. I had an axe. 
And fucking kids couldn't be more excited to see me. <laughs> <laughs> they open the door and it's they Santa Claus. Even, yeah, it, they didn't even. They're just like Santa. It's just like fuck. Yeah. That, wasn't that a segment on? It was um, American Horror Story Asylum. They had a killer Santa. Because I think it's a yeah, it was yeah, Ian McShane. Yeah, <laughs> it's an yeah. important thing, and it's one of those things where it's like. It's elusive. There's not like I mean, you mentioned what the Tales of the Crypt episode, uh, all through the house, uh, which what was only seen in what the seventy, the movie from the seventies and the HBO series, yeah, Silent Night, Deadly Night, I guess Christmas uh, two, Evil. three, and four. Yeah, <laughs> but even at but one was the only serious one because even two tried to take on the whole like he says stupid funny shit like. Before everything, you know? yeah. before yeah. he does anything, he has to say something stupid. Well, you mentioned Christmas Evil, and I know the poster, but does that actually have a killer Santa? I think it's Claus a killer on? Santa. I think it is. Huh. I really want to watch it. Damn it! Just because I'd be <laughs> curious that the uh, the uproar that greeted Silent Night, Deadly Night when that came to theaters. I mean, I remember in this town, even there were people picketing, you know, the showings oh. of that movie. I want to say really? the trailer was shown on TV one time before people called and complained and got right. it taken down because people were like. You can't My do kid that is to watching Santa. this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's four channels. You can't put, put a, a crazy Santa on one. Oh, what does that say about the world that we live in? That by the time Santa's sleigh rolls around in 2005, no one batted an eye at it. Well, because well, was it Bill Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's Bill. I suppose, but it's still it Killer Santa. The- is it just because it's like it wasn't advertised in uh, in theaters because it didn't come to theaters? Right. Well, almost all horror movies are straight to video. I mean, the horror market is straight to video now, basically. Yeah. So people know. I just think people know. Like I don't know when you even when you see Ginger Dead Man, you just know like eh, like if you want something chung and cheek. You know, you know that's what the but you know it's not going to be anything but that. You don't mm-hmm. have the like. I mean, I've looked at. I mean, I love Killer Santa so much that it's like I've looked at the cover of Saint. I've looked at the cover, but I'm just like, <laughs> no, these people are not going to fucking do it. I know they're going to give me some like, I don't know. What happened with the remake of uh, Silent? What is it just it called, called? Silent it Night. Was, it was just called Silent Night. Did you see it? I did see it. Is it a Killer Santa? It's a Killer Santa, but it doesn't give you much like. Well, no, I guess it does give you motive. It's not a remake of Silent Night, Deadly Night. No. It's this different thing. It's once again, like I said, I have a problem with when it comes to like Silent the 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 Dead uh, Silent Night remake has this problem. But when you have these Santa clauses that are like specifically killing naughty people, that's that problem you run into, like with the Friday Thirteenth remake, where you're like. I don't give a fuck about these people. These are shitty people. What do I care if Santa Claus kills them? You know, Mm -hmm. like you just don't care what Santa Claus is doing. He just, uh, you know, he's just, I don't even know. I don't know what that comes in. What that. But in the filmmakers' minds, it probably absolves them of any kind of like because you're killing Mm -hmm. naughty people. You're not actually going after Santa Claus is not killing. You know, just like little kids or whatever. But do they need to absolve? It's not like it's. It's not like it's played on TV. I mean, it's a rated R movie. It's like right. I don't know if they are trying to absolve. I mean, they're trying to make the naughty nice thing make sense. They just don't realize, well, you're making a boring movie because we don't know who the characters are because you're just going from house to house. Same thing that happened in this movie for the first, like, you know, he's just going from place to place and you're like, is this going to amount to anything? Or it's yeah. like, are these scenes they shot separately? Then they're like, we should put these in a movie. Because <laughs> you know, like, it, it feels like that sometimes. You're just like, I got that they have like Santa guy killing people. Yeah. But why? Because he wants to. Yeah, because they even <laughs> say at some book, point. Doesn't Krampus have a book? We're going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out. Maybe. In, uh, uh, so, Christmas evil, Christmas evil. Christmas evil. <laughs> um, Oh, what was I going to say? But the, uh, about Bill Goldberg, I mean, like, did he go on to star in anything else that we know of? I mean, did he go act in other motion pictures? He was in Universal Soldier. Oh, that's where he started out. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. uh, Was it The Return? I can't remember. Yeah, it was The Return. It was like the first sequel after everybody forgot about it. Right. Then there was another one. Yeah. Yeah, it was that first one. Wait, was he in one of the Expendables? I think. Was he? I don't think so. Steve Austin. That was Steve Austin. Yeah, Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, Goldberg's made little appearances. I mean, I'm sure he's been bad guys in multiple movies. Mm -hmm. He's just just a big, strong. Yeah, Yeah, he does his big shoulder flex thing. They puts his tongue out. And there's like the Goldberg, like lizard face. I don't even know what that is. (laughs) That's just what he does. 
I mean, just by casting him in this movie, I mean, like any any time that he's delivering one of his, you know, quips or whatever the the one line or the punch lines, it's like, you know, like he, it's he's not an actor. Right. No. So, I mean, even when he's doing this, it's like, you know, I don't know. It just it it, it betrays the tone of the movie it's because more enforces he always has it. to talk in the rhythmic of the. It's just like, dude, you don't need to talk like, like it's not wrestling. But the book that you cursed me a thousand years ago. Well, it's like, uh. yeah. <laughs> well, the biggest disappointment uh, in the climax of this movie is that uh, it's OK. We just watched this. And I'm a little I'm a little uh, fuzzy on the ending. Yeah. Like what actually happened in the ice rink to Santa Claus? I remember they had to rescue uh, the, yeah. the angel he grandfather the Zamboni out the wall. And, he and that was it. And he left. And then they're like, whoo, glad that's over. We well, won. Then, well, Grandpa was like, we got to go get him. And they're like, yeah. And then they try to leave. And Grandpa's like, oh, I can't leave because I'm dead and I'm an angel. That was that was it. Yeah. And then the so the scene in the airport where we see Bill Goldberg out of the Santa Claus outfit. And dressed yeah. like Bill Goldberg. Yeah. And dressed like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting a plane, getting on a plane. Because so he that's, lost, well, they, they yeah. blew up his bison or sled or whatever. Yeah. Right? So that's the idea. He's human now? Like, what? He's, no, is he human? He's going back to the North Pole. He'll see you again next year. Oh, he just doesn't have power. <laughs> that'd be that'd be shitty to be the son of Satan, have no powers. <laughs> like you get a sled. Well, fuck. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Jesus. Well, he did other have guy, super strength. Other guy walked on water, fish, bread, all that <laughs> um, shit. And he's he, like he he did shoot fiery coals out of his mouth. Yeah, oh, he yeah. did. Oh, yeah. They well, they, they could afford it more. once. Yeah. <laughs> that happened once. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they had done that more. I like that. Yeah, I mean, it was some kind of superpowers for, yeah. Oh, yeah. he killed one person with an icicle. It's like, come on. Yeah. Well, he did kill the strippers, but he but he pulled that coal out of his pocket and, like, breathed on it and then threw it at him because they were naughty and burned all the strippers. Fiery superpowers. Yeah, fiery superpowers. Yeah, he can bring fire and fly through the sky with his bison. bison. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, his bison's Naturally. got more powers than he does. <laughs> and, at least yeah. fly. and can run people over. Oh no, grandpa got run over by a reindeer. Yeah, right there I was like, dude, if it was a grandma, this would be hilarious. If it was a reindeer, would it have been any more funny instead of a bison? Well, you, you would have gotten it. You if think a grandma would have made it more funny? Well, because because <laughs> he wouldn't have had to say it. You know what I mean? Because uh, that's a joke, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah. joke is when you don't need to say it would have been a sight gag. It would have been like yeah. his grandma got ran over by the bison slash reindeer. And that would have been ha ha ha. But since it was a grandpa, he had to come out and be like, if you didn't know what you just saw, it was <laughs> grandpa instead of grandma. That's the punchline. Yeah. True. I get it. What yeah. about that? Right. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, does that bring us to the conclusion of, uh, you got any more stray observations, thoughts, or? I, I think that's. I wish somebody got I stabbed with a icicle. icicle. Yeah. I thought, I <laughs> it's thought on the was... cover. He did. He Didn't he put it like through he... somebody's chest or something and slammed them down on the ground with it? And... Did it? Did he? I remember, he, I remember him pulling he it pulled off. He pulled an the... icicle off, but that was when he was talking to Grandpa, and Grandpa oh, got run over by the rain. And that was, he was going after the kid with it, I yeah. think. Yeah. But yeah, he okay, didn't actually... you're right. Damn it. He stabbed someone with a candy cane. That happened in the beginning. That's true. Yeah, that was yeah. the I... And slammed their head yeah. down on the ground. Yeah. eggnog. I did like the Christmas star as a Chinese star in the back. Right. That was right. nice. Yeah. That was a nice touch. Oh, yeah. Clever. I mean, that's what you got to do if you're doing a Christmas horror movie, I guess, yeah. right? Use the implementation of the holiday. Yeah. Get a kiss from a hooker underneath, or a hooker, sorry, a, an I exotic mean, dancer. It's a fine line. Yeah, it's underneath a, a uh, right. <laughs> the mistletoe. <laughs> Santa's spreading holiday fear this year. Ooh, it rhymes. Okay, so does that bring us to time to summon... Igor? Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Anybody should, getting him anything for Christmas? We should put little reindeer horns on him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if you want to write to us, this is our mailbag, and uh, Igor is our mailman. If you want to write to us, then by all means, please do join the Freak Show family. We'd love to hear from each and every one of you. You can get a hold of us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, otherwise known as our Facebook page. You can get a hold of us on Twitter at Sad Freak Show or by email at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And this week, 
Justin Michael writes in and says, I started this movie for Bill Goldberg. I stayed because Emily DeRaven is super cute. You're not lying. She's cute. She is. She's she cute. makes the movie. She's a very energetic performer. She is. Even with terrible, terrible lines. Yeah. Jonathan Holt writes in and says, it's delightfully awful. And Bobette Georgie writes in and says, I'll agree with that. I agree with that assessment. Nick Hammond writes in and says, more great schlock. The opening sequence of the movie is the best, though. Agreed. Uh, and then about our Cool World episode, Chris Huddleston writes in and says, what are the freak show's opinions on animation in general? I'd love to see traditional animation make a comeback, though I figure it's wishful thinking. It is wishful thinking. <laughs> Unless they're just going to be nostalgic. Yeah, because what? It's just cheaper and easier to do keyframe animation than actually drawing every single mm -hmm. frame of an animated film. Does Disney even make stuff like that for home video anymore? Traditional 2D uh, sequels to so. The Little Mermaid or whatever? Not really, no. Because everything yeah. they're sequelizing is Pixar. Yeah, you it's, know? All, it's all Everything is generated. CG already. Yeah. What happens after, um, I mean, we all die. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. The world ends. <laughs> if, uh, if, Jap if Japan is doing like the last bastion of 2D animation with uh, Studio Ghibli, it, it, I mean, once that's over, because uh, Miyazaki's announced his retirement, correct? Or he's coming back for one more movie, I think. Maybe. But after he retires, I mean, uh, you know, Ralph Bakshi is on Kickstarter now doing his stuff. Um, I mean, Bill uh, Plimpton's out there. But not big theatrical no. releases. So we think the age of the 2D animated theatrical release is over? Probably. That sucks. It's so much more rich. I I miss it. That is kind of depressing. Yeah. Well, you well, just actually had character designs. Like, if you look at all these CG, it's, like, so weird. Since they're dealing with 3D models, it's hard for them to come up with, like, good character designs. Because a cartoon with a 2D, you can at least come up with the way something looks, right? Yeah. And and it can afford to look kind of goofy, I guess, and characteristic. Yeah, so you don't need to worry about a 3D. I don't want everything to look so real. I want the animation. It's a little more like, uh, I don't know. I mean, it it's is an, necessarily handcrafted, but, yeah. you know, it, it feels more. Um, yeah. It was our first language, people. Yeah, drawing. Well, there's always the Simpsons. They're going to be around until the end of time. They're working on it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're just doing Family Guy jokes. So it's oh like, no, that's that's true. Legit. There's always Family Guy. <laughs> there it is. Be around right. until the yeah, there's always TV, end of time. And cut out, uh, you know, South Park animation. All right, so that brings us around time for our wrap up. Stick around. You're going to find out what each one of us thought of Santa's sleigh and hear what we're watching next week. For whom does that bell toll? The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. All right, so we're going to start off with our wrap-ups for Santa Slay with Travis. What do you think of this movie, Travis? <laughs> <laughs> just another abomination. Just another, like, oh, my God. It's like, this is... I don't know. I don't know. I guess this is why it was so easy for modern-day horror movie like the Blumhouses, to get the sort of theatrical love they get is because all we did was make this straight-to-video ironic crap for so long. We're just like, what do you want to do? A funny doctor? A fucking killer, like, elf? Uh, you know? Are they As long as they have one-liners and say funny shit all throughout the movie, like, gore? No way. Like, we won't put gore in it. Like, they're here for the jokes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't get, like... Like, I get where the Fri the, the Freddy like audience came from because you had the mixture of the gore with the jokes and the and then like eventually the gore they got rid of the gore in these type of movies mm. and you're like what am i looking at here it's just like the whole thing is irony the whole it shouldn't be made yeah. it's like if your whole <laughs> if, if my art is just like just completely knowing i'm it's i don't know i don't even know I can't say it's like, it's like sharknado it's like i don't know but there there comes a time where it's like you know you're just not doing this uh, like for real it's like why even do this like because i mean shit i mean any movie that could be a funny killer santa it's like i can imagine it i can imagine the jokes i can imagine what it's like it, it always just seems like they never go for anything it's just like nope we're not gonna be bogged down with any genre we're just gonna be funny we're gonna have some violence i guess like you know a little bit not like 
It's like lazy filmmaking. It's lazy filmmaking. This is a, it's a buck. It's a Christmas, you know, they're just like, it's the sea, the Christmas season's coming around. If we make some stupid Santa movie and uh, make it look like a horror movie, people will rent it. And they did. (laughs) I guess so. I mean, I don't know if they did. I never hear about this movie. Where's Santa's Slate 2? Yeah, where? We're all wondering. (laughs) Fuck, it took how long to make Bad Santa 2? They ain't gonna fucking make it part two to this. That's that was a true. that was a successful bad Santa. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this movie is a waste. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think you know while we were watching it, I gave it a lot of uh, <clears throat> goodwill. I think toward the beginning because it does start start off what I think strong with that opening scene. You know, mm-hmm. just because of the I was wowed by the celebrity cameo appearances and that this was, you know after Jack Frost, a significant step up in terms of, you know, just being a professionally made movie. So I was like, okay, let's go with it. I get that it's a cynical um, attempt at filmmaking where basically, you know, I mean, the idea of it is that you're doing a movie just to, uh, because you came up with a silly concept, right? Mm -hmm. Bill Goldberg in a Santa suit, killing people go it's like yeah okay there's going to be an audience for it it is the ironic movie audience uh you know uh like travis said the sharknados the wolf cops the jack frosts you know of the world um does that make it worth making or more importantly does it make it worth your time to watch it uh there i would say i don't know i don't think so i mean i did enjoy seeing robert culp again in a movie for like the first time in god knows how many fucking years you know at the beginning i'm like is he senile now it's like no no he was pretty sharp and you know was delivering all of his lines it seems to be in good health i mean i just like seeing you know the old guy in a movie again mm-hmm. in a significant uh part and uh you know i mean you get some mileage out of emily de raven just being in the movie uh Goldberg does, I guess, what's been asked of him. So there's that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you're gonna make a uh, a Christmas horror movie, which I I get it, filmmakers, if you're listening to this podcast, that wasn't what you were aiming for. But I guess that would probably have been a little more up my alley. So this, you know, missed the mark. Uh, I would say you could probably safely live the rest of your life without seeing Santa's sleigh. Yeah, um, I, I I wanted more from this movie um, from the get go. Pretty much, I, I agree with Colin. The opening scene was pretty it was pretty strong. Like I was like, okay, this is gonna be silly, but I'm on board. This is kind of fun. Um, I I really wanted it to be more. I wanted it to be more slasher. It, it was a little too like the town that saved christmas kind of movie i it was it was like hallmark tried to make a horror movie is kind of how i felt um i think david steinman considering he had never made a movie before he had never directed anything he'd never shot anything i think he did a pretty good job considering i don't think he should write anything ever again because he he wrote this as well I think maybe given a better script, he could be a decent director if he was given another chance. Um, but I don't think he's done anything since this, surprisingly. <laughs> but did you think it was okay? I mean, I know this is, you know, we're apples and oranges or maybe sure, not. Sure. But I mean, did you think it was a better written movie than Jack Frost? Yes. So he did have that. He had that. <laughs> Is it better than Jack Frost? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. This is what's your point? What's your point, David? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I just, I just think it's hilarious that you can now say from the producer of The Revenant and Santa Slay. Like that's hilarious what? to me. Is Brett, he? Brett Ratner. Oh, Brett Ratner. Okay. Brett Ratner. Yeah. yeah. I just think that's funny to me. But no, I, I wanted so much more. They could have upped the gore. They could have upped the, the, yeah. This could have been so much more. I agree with Travis. If you're going to do Evil Santa, like there's a core that you want from Evil Santa. And this didn't really make the mark. It was it was an interesting concept. Um, but I think you can I think you can skip it and never have any regrets about that. There you go. Well, all right. So that's Santa Slate next week, ladies and germs. Colin, 
What are we watching next week? Well, I think we're going to continue the holiday tradition since it, it will be Christmas Eve. So we'll do Krampus. Sorry, Travis. Christmas Eve will have to wait for another year. Krampus, then, <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>